Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So it is a beautiful sunny summer Monday afternoon and I have some time to do a little bit of sewing. So I am really excited to start on a new dress project today. I've really been wanting to make a few different summer dresses and I'm really excited about this first one that I have to share with you. So let me show you what this project is going to entail. So in my most recent video, I talked a little bit about some projects that I'm planning for the summer and the one that it seemed like you guys were most interested in seeing it next is this pattern from McCall's Patterns. This is a Laura Ashley reprint from the 1970s. And I just think this is such a pretty style. I especially like the wraparound styling here on the bodice. So I'm very excited to try my hand at this pattern today. The fabric that I've chosen for this project is this beautiful rayon from Rifle Paper Company, which I absolutely love. It has such a nice fluid drape to it. I think that's upside down. <laughs> there we go. It has such a beautiful fluid drape and then it's on this cream background with all of these different colors, which I think are so pretty. And I think the more classic look of this print will really suit the style of this pattern. So I think it will be a really nice combination. They did very kindly send me this fabric and you guys know that I always love, love, love their fabrics. Now I want to mix this pattern up a little bit and not just have a plain um, fabric. I want to also use some trim. So I picked up a couple of things at Joann's last week. Let me show you. So I I know this pattern is a Laura Ashley pattern, but I've been on a little bit of a gunny sacks kick this summer. I've been really into looking at gunny sack styles and getting a little bit inspired. And I am still on my crocheted lace kick from the rest of the year. I've been using it in I think almost every project. So I got a new crocheted lace from Joanne. This one is so pretty. It is a cream colored kind of like beaded crochet trim. So what I'm planning to do with this is to thread some satin ribbon through it and use it along the neckline. So I got this really pretty sage green double faced satin ribbon from Joanne. And I think this combination is going to be so nice. This is going to help bring out the green tones in the fabric a little bit more as you can see here. So I'm really hoping this will go together well and be really pretty. One of the features that I do really like on vintage gunny sacks dresses is that oftentimes they would sew down a piece of satin ribbon along the skirt and I thought it looked so pretty. So I think this will look really nice for that as well with this width of this green ribbon. So we're going to play a little bit with some trims today and see how it goes. I'm excited and just really excited to see how this dress comes together. So first things first, I need to make some tea I think today. I don't really need any more coffee and let's get started cutting this out. So I'm just now laying out my pattern pieces to cut out this dress and I'm realizing this pattern is actually a little bit different than I thought it was because here is an example of the front piece that will wrap around and you can see it's actually a full dress length, though I did cut this to the shorter length to do the ruffle instead of it being separate bodice and skirt pieces, which I did not realize. So I just wasn't paying close attention. I think this is also the side of the front here and then here is the back piece. So I think with this in mind, I don't actually have enough fabric to cut out all of the ruffles. I wasn't quite sure which view I was going to do. So I think what I'm going to start with is cutting out all of the top parts of the dress and the sleeves and then going ahead and ordering just a little bit more fabric for the ruffles because it is quite a big ruffle and the ruffle piece you have to cut out five of. So I think I will want a little bit more to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And that way over the next few days, I can focus on this part of the dress. And then when that fabric arrives, I can just add the ruffle to the hem. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and get these pieces pinned down and cut out and then we can get started on some sewing. Okay. 
Okay, so I have just made a really big mess and cut out all of the pieces that I could fit out of the amount of fabric that I have. But I wanted to show you really quickly before I start sewing the sewing directions because this is all there is to this dress, just this one page of pattern guide instructions. And I think just based on what I have seen from looking at the instructions, this would be a great option if you're looking for a beginner project because it's constructed as a wrap dress. You don't have to attach bodice pieces. You don't have to do a zipper or any of that fun stuff. So I might take that back after I sew through it, but I think it's going to be a really good option. So let's go ahead and get started putting this together. Okay, so first things first, please excuse the sunlight on my ironing board. Hopefully that will go away pretty soon. This is the front of the dress. Dress, and this is the right side of the front since there are two opposite sides the right and the left and the first thing I'm going to do to put this dress together is to start to sew what I'm going to call the side seams so we have this right front portion of the dress and then attached to that is what they describe as the side front this only goes on one side on the right side and I'm going to line this here with the right sides together and sew this seam with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance so that when I open this up, it's like this piece has extended. Then after I sew and serge this seam, I'm going to go ahead and sew what are the actual side seams, the right side and the left side to the back portion of the dress. And that will have this one large wraparound piece all assembled. I've had several very kind people in the comments always telling me that I need to adjust the way I put my pins in so that the pin head is on this side and I'm really trying to get in that habit because I know it does save time. I just for some reason have the habit of putting them in the other direction so thank you for always sharing your tips. I'm trying to implement them. I think while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and pin all of those other seams as well and just assembly line this. It'll be a little faster. I wanted to quickly show you the shape of the back piece so it has this more uniform neckline and then these little underarm sections here so you can tell that it was cut on the fold as opposed to the front pieces. All right, so all three of those seams are pinned and I'm ready to take this to the sewing machine and the serger and get everything set in place. My machine might look a little bit funny today because my light is currently burned out and I'm waiting for a replacement bulb to come in the mail today. It should be in today, but I've never had that happen. I really thought this machine had broken at first. I was so nervous, but then it was still actually running. So thankfully, just a burnt out light bulb. just a few minutes into sewing and I've already forgotten one thing. I need to leave a little gap right here on the right side seam. This will become the opening where the ties can go through so that this can wrap around properly. So I'm just going to mark this. I've already sewn my side seam because as I said, I forgot here. Um, so I'm just gonna mark the distance that I need and then I'll go in with my seam ripper and open this up and just redo that really quickly. Okay, so I did decide just to go ahead and take that entire seam out so that I can go ahead and use my serger along this seam edge before I sew the seam together. That way when I leave that gap and go in and top stitch to create that opening for the tie, I won't have to worry about anything weird going on when I want to finish the raw edges. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the serger on both of these really quickly and then put that seam back together. I know it can be kind of um, confusing and or boring to see the things that I do wrong in these videos, but hopefully it's helpful as well somehow. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so now I have my little gap in the stitching here, as you can maybe see, yeah, little gap in the stitching here. And so I can go ahead and top stitch on the other side of this just to secure that. And so when I'm wearing this dress, I'll know exactly where that is to put the ties through. It's easier to see when you open that seam out, which I'll make sure to press the seam open. And I'm just gonna go ahead and top stitch this down here now. Okay, so let me see if I can make this make sense because this piece is kind of hard to see just because everything is sewn together. So here is the back and I'm going to go ahead and fold this and wrap it around so you can see everything kind of assembled. Okay, so I just pinned this together a little bit so that hopefully we can get an idea of how this actually looks because it is just this one long piece of fabric now that everything is assembled so it's kind of hard to see but we have those two front sections that wrap around in the front the back piece and then this is that front side that was sewn on to the side there and then this edge is narrow hemmed as well as the left side which is inside here now I'm not quite sure how the wraparound is going to work on this. I need to look at the pattern guide for a little bit more information, but what I've decided to do on this dress is to split this project into three days of sewing. So day one is actually done because it's just assembling that front and back pieces. And then I will do the sleeves on one day and then the ruffles on another day. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here for today and check back in with you on the next day of working on this project. Hey friends. So I am back to working on this dress project today and the rest of my fabric did come in. So I now have enough to finish up the design just as I want it to be for this particular dress. So the first order of business today is to get started on the sleeves. So I'm going to go try to assemble the first one now. So to assemble these sleeves, the first thing I'm going to do is very simply just sew up the side seam. And let me see if I can show you this. So the way this sleeve is designed, there's this little scoop portion here that is the armhole. And then this part actually ends up going across the shoulder in the end. So it would kind of sit like this, so you can visualize that with me. So yes, the first thing I'm going to do is just to sew and serge the side seam. And then I am going to create an elastic casing along the bottom of the sleeve. And I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. So now I'm going to work on the hem and the elastic casing for the sleeves. And if you notice here, we have this fold line along the base of the sleeve. This is what's going to become the little ruffle at the edge as well as the elastic casing. So I'm going to go ahead and fold that up along the hemline and press that into place. And then finally, I'm just going to fold under this raw edge about a quarter of an inch so that everything can be nicely encased here. So now I can take this to the sewing machine and sew across in two different places. I will sew right along where that edge meets the um, rest of the sleeve here, and then also about a half of an inch from the base of the sleeve. And I will sew the lower one all the way across, but the top one I will leave a little gap probably at the seam line just so that I can insert my elastic here in a second. And then one more thing I'm going to do on this because this is something that I'm very excited about. I have my crocheted lace and I am going to add a crocheted lace along the hem of the sleeves. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I'm not 100% sure how much I will like this, but it will be a lot easier to add this now. So I'm going to cut a length of this lace and go ahead and sew it to the very edge of the sleeve here, just aligning that underneath the sleeve and then top stitching all the way around. So I'm gonna get all of that sewn and then we can add the elastic.
And now I can go ahead and add my crocheted lace. So to do this, I'm not cutting the length of this lace down because I want to just make sure I have plenty to work with. And I'm just going to start sewing it, leaving a little bit of a tail here at the end. And I will start sewing just a little bit past where the seam line is here on my sleeve. That way I can come back and join the ends of the lace together and make sure that everything looks really seamless. We got a straight thread right there. Okay, and now I can go ahead and trim the lace to the length that I need it to be. So I'm just going to cut right here. So I have my two little lace tails here. I'm just going to sew these together like a mini side seam, trim any excess, and then when I turn that towards the right side, I can close up that tiny gap in stitches right here so that everything is really smooth. I'm also going to make sure to use a lot of back stitching here. and we have the lace added. I think it's looking pretty cute. So now it's time to add the elastic. Okay, please excuse the sunlight here on the ironing board, but I've cut a length of elastic that fits comfortably around my upper arm with a little bit of extra just for a seam allowance. But I'm going to go ahead and add this into the channel that I've created with the stitching. So then from here, I just want to make sure that my elastic is not twisted and I'm going to overlap it and use zigzag stitches to sew this in place. And then on the right side, I'll just go through and cover up that little gap with a little bit of top stitching. And then here you can see there's that gap in the stitching, so I'm just going to stitch to close that gap. Let me make sure I turn this back off of zigzag. <laughs> might be important. Okay, and just to make things easy, I've gone ahead and made both sleeves and now I can go ahead and add the sleeves to the armholes of the dress. So this should be very simple to do. You can see it's just a matching curve here. So I'm just going to match up my side seams and pin each sleeve to the armhole and sew this down and use my serger to clean up the edge. Should be pretty quick and easy. Sleeve one is pinned into place. Let me go ahead and do the other one. Okay, sleeves are pinned on. I'm going to sew all of this down. So I have both sleeves attached now. I think they're looking very cute. And I believe that the next step is where it's really going to start to take shape because I will be adding the elastic to the neckline. And since this does wrap around, it's kind of hard to see how it will look in the end right now, just looking at everything open like this. So I'm excited to do that step. But 
at the moment it is very hot in my sewing room because my air conditioning is out and I don't know why I thought being in here right around sunset would be a good idea but I am a little bit toasty so I'm gonna go cool down take a little break and then once the sun goes down I will come back and add the casing for the elastic and the elastic to the neckline so I will see you guys in just a little bit <laughs> So the sun has gone down and it's much cooler in this room now so I am ready to continue on on this dress project so what I have done already is gone ahead and double folded over the edge of the neckline and the top of the sleeves here for a narrow hem again I feel like this is kind of difficult to show you what all is going on here and I wish it was easier to see but unfortunately I think that's just part of the design but one thing that I do want to incorporate to the neckline is more of this lace trimming and also I think I want to add in some of this green ribbon so let me show you how I think I'm going to do that so for this part of the dress I'm planning to add in my lace in the same way that I did to the edge of the sleeves just laying it underneath the edge and then stitching it down as I stitch this hem but I think for this part of the dress, I'm going to thread some of this green ribbon through the beading and the lace just to bring a little bit of that color to the neckline. I think that's going to look really pretty and help tie the whole design together. So to add this to the lace, I'm just going to use a tapestry needle and hopefully that will work pretty well just to thread it through quite quickly. So I'm going to start on that now and then add the lace to the neckline and sew that whole hem down. Okay, so far so good. I think that's looking quite pretty. So I'm just going to continue threading this through. Okay, I believe I have the correct amount of this trim made here, but I'm going to go ahead and pin it on before I cut anything just to make sure I don't need any extra um, amounts of the lace or ribbon and then I can go ahead and top stitch this all the way across. Okay, and all of the lace is pinned in place, so now I can go ahead and go sew all of this down. the lace is attached all the way around the entirety of the neck edge and now there's only one more thing I was planning to get done on this today and that is to add the casing for the elastic and the elastic to the neckline so to do this you just use bias tape this is how the pattern has this designated so I'm just going to sew this on both sides all the way around the neck edge and then add the elastic to the casing So now I can go sew on either side of the bias tape so that this creates that channel for the elastic all the way across. 
I have folded over the edges of the bias tape, the short edges on both ends. So those will be open right now, but after I add the elastic, I will stitch over those edges to secure everything in place. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these kind of long seams to attach this bias tape. Okay, so the elastic channel is now in place. You can see I've sewn on both sides of that bias tape. And then I've gone ahead and cut my elastic to the length that the pattern requires. There's a different measurement for each size. And I'm going to go ahead and add the elastic to the dress. I'm really excited about this part. I feel like this is going to help it start to look a little bit more like a dress. So let's see what happens. One thing I really love about the look of this ribbon within the lace is it's something a little bit more custom. Um, I would not have been able to find a trim like this at my fabric store, but it's something unique that I can add to this project. Okay, so now I can go top stitch over the edge of the bias tape, catching that elastic in that stitching, and then I'll just stretch on the elastic and trim it off really, really close to where the bias tape ends. That way I can go ahead and even out the elastic and see how this looks. Okay, so here is how it is looking now that I've got that elastic in. I'm slightly concerned that it might be a little bit too tight, but I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be okay. So one thing I'm going to change from the original pattern is instead of using a fabric waist tie, I'm actually going to use the ribbon to be the waist tie. I think it will give a little bit of continuity with the way that the ribbon goes through the lace and then adding it to the waist I think will be really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on two pieces of ribbon at the end of the bias tape that we added earlier. Um, so I'll do that on both sides.
Okay, so I am back today to hopefully finish this dress up. So here is what it's looking like so far. I have just pinned the bodice here in the front so that you can kind of get an idea for what it looks like on the hanger. And all I'm going to do today now to finish it up is add the tier to the bottom of the skirt. So I have all of my ruffle pieces cut out here and these are just six rectangles of fabric that I'm going to sew together to create one really long piece to go all the way around the bottom of the skirt and I think it's going to look really pretty. I do want to play around with adding some trim between the skirt and the ruffle so we'll see how that goes but for now it's just going to be a little bit of an assembly line process of getting those ruffle pieces sewn together so that's where I'm going to start. This pattern piece was almost the entire width of my fabric, so I just gone ahead and cut these pieces out as the full width of the fabric, and I'm just going to sew with my seam allowance um, above the selvage here so that that can be trimmed away, and it should work out pretty nicely. You know what, I'm about to start pinning this, but I'm thinking I'm not even going to bother pinning this because this is just going to be an easy straight seam, and I think it will be easier if I just do this all in one fell swoop. So we're gonna try that. <laughs> So I just took a little break and had a snack, got some water, because this is such a long piece of fabric. I don't even know if I can get the scale of this on here for you, but there is so much going on here. With this ruffle, it's still going. I feel like I could throw this out of a tower window if I needed to escape. And so I uh, got kind of overheated after using the iron to press up the entire hem. So I'm going to go ahead and hem this now along what will be the bottom hem for the entire dress. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put in the gathering stitches on the top of this ruffle. And the way I'm going to do that is just how the pattern describes. I'm going to divide it up into the six different sections that make up the ruffle. That way I don't have to do some really, really long section of stitching where I will inevitably run out of bobbin thread. So I think those smaller sections will help keep this a little bit more manageable. So I'm watching some vlogs on my phone right now and I'm just going to get stitching because this is going to take a little bit of time. But once I'm done with this, then I just have to attach the ruffle to the dress and then add any final trim and finishing. So we're getting close. <laughs> Okay, so I now have all of my gathering stitches added into the different sections on this ruffle. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling up my gathering stitches to create the ruffle and then I can adjust this to be really even across the hemline of the skirt. Now this piece was huge, but I have a feeling that it's going to compress quite a lot as I do the gathering because this rayon fabric is so light. I think it will look a lot more or a lot less voluminous than it does now or then it looks like it might, so we'll see how that goes.
Okay, so the ruffle is attached, which is very exciting. I will say I don't feel like this is my neatest work attaching it to the bottom of the skirt, but I don't think you'll really be able to tell because it is quite voluminous. So the one thing I think I'm going to add just for a little bit more detail is some more of that green ribbon. And I got this idea from some different gunny sacks pieces that I've seen. So let me show you. So I just want to bring more of this color into the lower half of the dress, but I don't want it to be super distracting. So all I think I'm going to do is top stitch a row of the ribbon all the way around, maybe like four inches from where the ruffle starts, just to give a little bit more of that color to the bottom part of the dress. So that's all I'm going to do, and then this will be done, which is very exciting. Okay, so I actually have the dress on right now and I am 99% happy with it, but I've decided I actually think that the green ribbon around the hemline of the skirt just kind of blends in and doesn't really add anything to the design. So I'm actually going to take that off and then this will be done. So I think I'll do a little bit of seam ripping on that and I think that will let the whole design flow just a little bit better. It just did not quite achieve what I thought it would achieve, I think because of the busyness of the print. So I'm going to take that off and then I will show you the entire dress once it's finished. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking and the wind blowing in the trees. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Hey friends, so the dress is done and I am so happy with how it turned out. I was just outside in the heat taking some photos and videos of it and I'm just really pleased with it. I think it works a lot better without that green ribbon around the bottom, which I took off yesterday. And I'm just so happy with the final result. It's very comfortable to wear. So I'm very pleased with this pattern and I just love this fabric so much as well and all the little details in this dress. I'm excited to wear it all of the rest of the summer and going into the fall. I think there could be some cute ways to style this going into fall as well. So I really hope you enjoyed following along for this project in this video. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. I am hoping to go ahead and start another sewing project now, now that I've finished this one. So I will talk to you all in a new sewing video very, very soon. I hope you're all doing really well and I will talk to you then. Bye. And I'll let my mind be carried by the waves Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly